Hey guys, today I'm filming a review on the Alomar Reina del Caribe palette. I'm not quite sure how to say it. If you guys are unfamiliar with this brand, it is a brand new company created by Gabby T. Anyway, who is Kathleen Light's friend. She does all the makeup for the Kale Polish photo shoots and she does work for BoxyCharm. And she recently created her own brand with this palette and a few eye brushes. And this palette says volume one, so I'm hoping that means that they will release more palettes in the future. This palette it does cost $28 and is available on the Alomar website. A lot of people were able to receive this in their BoxyCharm a few months ago and I had actually purchased this from a BoxyCharm Facebook group for $11 including shipping which is an amazing deal. Most people were selling it for around $15 so I will have the Facebook group linked down below in case you guys would like to check it out. So to show you the packaging for this palette it is a sturdy cardboard with a magnetic closure which you guys know is my favorite style of packaging so it is this beautiful yellow shade and when you open it up you have these beautiful tropical flowers and there is no mirror in here which is the only thing I would change but it isn't really a big deal. I do like that the lid folds all the way back and then you do have eight eyeshadows. The top four are metallic and the bottom four are matte. These shades are so stunning and I have not seen this palette on Temptalia's website so I won't be able to include dupes for you and even though you look at these shades you might think you have them in your collection. The undertones of these shades make them very unique. And the most unique shade in the palette by far is El Malacion. I'm wearing it on my lids today. It's like a silvery champagne green super unique and then like I said even these matte shades down here something about the tones to them make them unique to the other things I have in my collection which can be really difficult to do so I'm going to show you all of the shades with swatches so here's a close-up of the palette these top four shades are foiled and the bottom four are matte so La Costa in the pan looks like more of a pinky champagne but swatched out it is a little bit more on the peachy side then El Malacion is a super unique color. It is like a sagey green mixed with a silver or a champagne. It's a super unique color I really enjoy. Then we have Veradero which is a really shimmery bright blue navy-ish color. Kind of reminds me of Color Pop coconut. Then here we have the shade Celia, which is the most perfect turquoise color. Then for the mattes, we have Coco Taxi, which is a bit like a Kraft Mac and Cheese dust kind of color. Then we have Tropico, which is a red tone carrot orange. Then we have Guantanamera, which is a super unique berry maroon kind of color and the last one we have is cafecito which is a really rich chocolate brown so swatches from left to right here we have la costa el malacion veradero celia coco taxi tropico guantaramera and cafecito so I was able to create five different looks with this palette. I will show you the details of all the looks and then I do have a tutorial on the look I'm wearing today and I will add that at the very end of the video in case you're only interested in hearing the review. Here is today's look using my palette of the month. As a base on my lid, I'm using the L'Oreal Infallible Eyeshadow Crayon in Enduring Rose. For my transition color, I use Makeup Geek Cupcake. From the Alamar palette, I'm wearing La Costa on my lid. On my crease and outer corner, I'm using Guantanamera. On my lower lash line, I'm using the Pixi Endless Silky Eye Pin in Rose Glow. Here are what the eyes look like up close. On my cheeks, I'm wearing MAC Blush and Fleur Power. On my lips, I'm wearing the Lime Crime Plushies Lip Stain in the shade Lavender Honey. Here is today's look using my palette of the month. And this look was a recreation from a tutorial by Christy Kellum. I will have that linked up in the card too. So got to check her out and subscribe to her channel. From the Alamar palette, I use Coco Taxi, really buffed out as my main transition color. Then I took the color Tropico and used it as a hybrid transition crease color. And I took Guantanamera and I put this mostly in my outer corner but also into my crease. For the lid it's almost a halo. I have it going from the darkest on the sides then I have the middle shade and then in the lightest it is 
the lightest shade of course I'm not quite sure how to describe it but you guys will see when you look at my eyes so the first shade is a Varadero which is on the inner and outermost part of my lid the second shade I have on my lid is Celia and then El Molacion is the one I have right in the center of my lid. Here with the eyes that look like up close, this is only my second time ever attempting to cut crease, so they aren't quite even, but please forgive me. On my cheeks, I'm wearing MAC Blush and Ripe for Love. For my lips, I lined and filled them in completely with the ColourPop Lippy Pencil in Aquarius, and then I went over the top of that with the ColourPop High Shine Ultra Glossy Lip in the shade Champagne Mommy. Here is today's look using my palette of the month. From the Alamar palette, I'm wearing a Cafecito on my lid, Tropico as my crease color, and Coco Taxi as my transition color. On my lower lash line, I use the Maybelline Lasting Drama Pencil Liner in the shade Striking Copper. Here what the eyes look like up close. On my cheeks, I'm wearing a Makeup Geek XOXO. On my lips, I'm wearing a combination of two lipsticks. First, I apply the NARS Audacious Lipstick in Raquel. I went over top with the Too Faced La Creme Lipstick and Country Star, which is a limited edition shade. This added a little bit more of a peachy tone and it created all of the glossy shine. Here is today's look using my palette of the month. As my transition color, I use a Makeup Geek Petal Pusher. Then really buffed out in my crease, I use a Makeup Geek Cupcake. From the Alamar palette, I did a halo eye with Celia in the center and Vedadero on the inner and outer portion of the lid. And then in the outer part of my crease, I used Guantanamera. Here what the eyes look like up close. This is probably my third time attempting a cut crease and they're definitely not even today. I think this one definitely looks a little bit better. This one is a little too high, but here what the eyes look like up close. On my cheeks, I'm wearing Clinique Cheek Pop in Heather Pop. On my lips, I'm wearing a combination of two lipsticks. As my base lip color, I use this Bite Beauty Matte Cream Lip Crayon in the shade Glossé. And then in the center to brighten it up a little bit, I use the Revlon Super Lustrous Lipstick in Primrose. Here's today's look used for my palette of the month. I used El Molesion on my lid. Coco Taxi as my transition color, and Tropico as my crease color. Here what the eyes look like up close. On my cheeks I'm wearing MAC Blush and Ripe for Love. On my lips I'm wearing the Tarte Matte Lip Surgeons in Exposed. So as you can see when I was using this palette I tried to just use the eyeshadows in this palette but the couple times I did try to go with a more cool tone look or bring in this purple I did bring in some Makeup Geek shades for transition colors just because there isn't a lighter matte in here there are only eight shades but the fact that I was able to come up with five different looks using eight eyeshadows I thought was pretty impressive especially for me and my level of creativity so I definitely think you are able to get quite a few looks out of this palette and if you add this palette with other single shadows or other palettes in your collection to create a full look, you will be able to come up with so many more. So now to talk about the formula, the texture, and the pigmentation of these shadows, starting with the shimmers. So these are incredibly pigmented and intense. They look intense when you apply them with a brush, but even more out of this world intense and shimmering when you pack them on with your finger. With these shades, I did have a bit of fallout when I was applying them, so I'd recommend doing your eye makeup first or doing what I did today in the tutorial and holding a little tissue under your eye to catch the fallout. I definitely recommend using a glitter glue underneath of them to help the pigment stick to your eye. And also with several of my eye looks, I did create a cut crease using the ColourPop No Filter Concealer. Using this palette was actually my first time I've ever tried doing a cut crease and I actually really, really enjoyed it. And having this tacky concealer as a base really made the shadows adhere to my eye as well. But these shades I think are so unique in color, but also they have such an intense Hence reflect and shift to them that I haven't quite experienced with other shades that make them look liquid on the eye, which is so cool. So I'm really happy with those. Then for the four matte shades down here, again, the formula between all four of these is very consistent. They are incredibly pigmented 
without being too, too much. I feel like recently I've been trying some palettes where the matte shades, I just have to build and build and build them, which is really annoying to me, but these are very pigmented right from the jump. They do have a good bit of powder kick up, but that does not bother me. And they have less than a Lorac shadow or an Anastasia shadow. They're really easy to work with to blend and build up. So I'm really happy with the performance of all of these shades. I think that the performance of all of them is A plus quality. And I also think that the shades are amazing. And even this dark brown, you guys know I'm like never using dark brown, but I did create a look where I use that one on the lid. I don't often use matte shades on the lid and I don't often work with dark browns. I thought this was gonna look patchy or be hard to blend out. It was so easy to create that look and put this on the lid and blend out these other matte shades in the crease. I was so impressed with how easy that was for me because I usually have a pretty difficult time making a smoky eye look work for me, but with this palette, amazing. So I just cannot rave about the quality and the shades enough in this palette. My thoughts are pretty simple on this palette. It is a amazing. The colors, the quality is absolutely fantastic. I had seen this and I wasn't sure if I needed it, but I'm so glad I went and found it on the Facebook group because I would not want to be without this palette in my collection. I really hope they add more palettes to their line and I will buy them full price because I'm so impressed with the quality of this one. So big shout out to Gabby for making such amazing eyeshadows and I highly recommend you guys get this if you can. I would love to know your thoughts if you try this palette and I would love to know what what looks you created using it. There are quite a few different YouTube tutorials using this palette in case you want to find more ways to use yours or just get inspired to create looks using similar shades. So now we're going to move on to the tutorial. So I've already applied my eyeshadow primer. I set under my brow with a matte white and I set my crease with a matte cream. From the Alamar palette, I'm going to be taking this matte yellowy mustard shade called Coco Taxi. I'm going to be applying it with the Morphe R40 brush. So this shade is going to be a combination of a transition and crease color, which is why I'm using two different brushes. So I am starting out with this really big fluffy brush to give a really nice wash of color as a transition shade. I would probably, if I was using more shades outside of this palette, pull for something a little bit lighter, but because I just want to use this, I'm going to get a small amount of product on a big fluffy brush. So then I'm just windshield wiper motions back and forth in my transition area. And I'm dusting very lightly because this is a pretty pigmented color. So also small circular motions and then windshield wiper motions back and forth. I just picked up a little bit more color and then just blending. Then I'm gonna take the same Coco Taxi shade with the Morphe R38 brush. So this brush is smaller and denser and I'm going to pick up that same color and apply it a little more concentrated right into my crease. That way this really functions as two different shades basically because I am using different amounts of products and two different brushes. Next I'm taking this matte ready orange Tropico with my Morphe R39 brush. So I have a lot of product here and I'm going to stamp it on the outer portion of my crease and then just blend. And then whatever is left in the brush slightly blending to the inner part of the crease. And I'm taking Tropico again with my MAC 286 Duo Fiber Taper Blending Brush. And I'm gonna go back over this area here and blend more into the crease. Just so this isn't so crazy intense. But I do want it to be really deepened on this outer portion here because we are going to cut the crease, which for me will cover up a decent bit of the shadow. So now I'm going to be cutting my crease with the ColourPop No Filter Concealer. I am just using the shade Fair 04 and I will be using a tip that I learned from Kelly Gooch in one of her tutorials. And this is probably my fourth or fifth time attempting a cut crease. So please forgive me if they are not even. So I'm going to apply it with this ColourPop shader brush. They don't make these brushes anymore. They made these for just a couple months and then they came out with their new brushes. But I think that this is a really nice synthetic brush. It's really skinny and works really well to apply concealer to the eye. So I just put some on the back of my hand here and I'm gonna take some of the brush like this and then I am going to draw it down my lid and then raise my eyes up, open them, and then the concealer will transfer to where I need to bring it up to. And this 
is such a great tip because I do have really hooded lids and this works so well for me. So I'm going to do it over here as well because some of the problem that I was having is that I wasn't able to get my two eyes even. So hopefully this will really help me. So I apply this over the whole lid, but as you can see over here, I didn't fill in the very outer portion of my lid. I wanted to keep that dark with the matte Tropico color. So now I have the concealer on most of my lid. As I said, I did leave the shadow on the outer corner. So I'm gonna take this shimmery greenish shade El Malecion and I'm going to apply it right on top of that concealer by MAC 242 Synthetic Shading Brush. And I don't usually love this brush with the shimmer shades, but I find it works really well when I am using this brush after I've put concealer on my lid. So I do get a little bit of fallout with the shimmer. So I did pick up some products on my brush and then I am just going to place a tissue under my eye to catch any of the fallout. And then we're going to press this right over the concealer. And just trying to make sure I cover up the concealer completely. And I really love this brush because it's really easy to just dig right into the crease of my eye. So then I'm gonna take that shade on my finger and press this on my lid to really get that intensity. With this look, I think I'm not going to do any liner, but I will apply some mascara and then the look is complete. So guys, those are all of my thoughts on this Alamar palette. I highly recommend it. I think it is absolutely incredible and I would love to know your thoughts. If you tried out this palette in the comments down below, thank you so much for watching this video. Please like, comment, and subscribe and I'll talk to you soon. Bye guys.